Hi, I'm Tosh Lubeck and I started in professional audio production way back in the early 1980s, working in commercial radio. So I've been hooking up microphones to reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders and PCs for a while. Today I'm looking at this, the Shaw MDX2U USB adapter, a piece of kit that lets you connect an XLR microphone to a computer. So stay tuned as we begin. First up, what's in the box? Well, it's not a big box, so don't expect lots of stuff, but let's take a, a look. Uh, first off, you get the owner's manual. Um, I think it's got like service information, warranty stuff, so you probably won't need that. Uh, then the quick start guide. This um, shows you how to connect up to your uh, computer. There's also uh, information about the Motive desktop app. And on the back, a QR code uh, to get to more information about the unit inside the box itself, though. Uh, you have the MVX2U. Um, that's it there. A um, bit hefty in the hand, but that's good. And then also a one meter or three foot USB-C to USB-C cable so that you connect the... Uh, um, MVXCU to your laptop or desktop computer. So what is this? Well, basically it's a one channel audio interface that can slip into your pocket. You can take it anywhere, plug it into a desktop or laptop, and then attach your favorite XLR microphone and start recording. I'll put an Amazon link down in the description if you want to get one of these. If you use it, thanks very much. You'll be supporting this channel. Also, if you could like, share and subscribe, that would be fantastic. Now, this audio interface is all metal, so you get the impression of quality and durability when you've got it in your hand. It's got a bit of heft to it. Now, one end has got a female XLR connector. You connect that to the base of your microphone. That's probably the best, best place for it since you'll also want to plug your headphones into this end for live monitoring. But you could also plug the interface into the far end of your XLR audio cable if you want to do that. The other end of the MVX2U has got a USB-C port on it. So that connects to your computer. There's also a three and a half millimeter headphone socket that gives you zero latency direct monitoring and the ability to listen to your computer's audio playback. And finally, there's a 48 volt phantom power status LED. Incidentally, the first time that you connect this, the phantom power will be on. So be careful if you're using a ribbon mic. There's also a second LED on the side of the interface uh, for the device status. That's just opposite the uh, lock uh, for the XLR connector. Green shows that you have a successful USB connection. Amber is a failed USB connection. Although when you connect the interface to your computer, the LED will initially be amber and then turn green when the connection is made. That's uh, normal, so don't worry about that. Flashing amber shows a firmware update is in progress. Red means that the MVX2U is muted and off. Well, that just indicates that it's just not connected. I'll put the key features of the MVX2U on the screen rather than go through each one. So if you're interested to see what the features are, then just pause the video and have a quick read. Now, there aren't any controls on the audio interface itself. Uh, so the gain, muting, phantom power, and any audio processing like the limiter, compressor, and EQ are all controlled in the free SharePlus Motive desktop app that you'll need to download from the Shure website. Now, that doesn't mean that the interface will only work if you have the app open or even on the computer that you're using. Once you adjust the settings, they'll be saved to the MVX to you. It's compatible with Windows and Mac computers, and I've also tested it with my Samsung Android A53 5G phone. 
Unfortunately, if you've got the SurePlus Motive app installed on your phone, the settings don't work, not even the cane slider. But you can record uh, using the adapter or using the settings that have already been saved to the MVX to you. The headphone output has a 32 ohm impedance, so low impedance headphones like these will sound loud enough. But if you have uh, high impedance headphones like these 400 ohm Bayer Dynamic DT100s, the sound will be quiet. Most consumer level headphones are around 32 ohms. Professional monitoring headphones are normally available in a choice of impedances, so get a pair that match the MVX to you. Setup is easy, and if you're going to be using the MVX to you with the same microphone, the same person, and speaking at roughly the same level, you might only need to do this once using the SurePlus Motive desktop app. So download the SurePlus Motive desktop app. I'll put the URL up on the screen and down in the description. Once you've installed the desktop app, plug an XLR microphone into the MVX to you or into the other end of a cable that you've got connected to your microphone. Then connect the MVX to you to a USB-C port on your computer using the supplied USB cable. Now, if you don't have a USB-C port on your computer, don't worry. Just use a USB-A to USB-C cable. The LED on the side of the MVX to you will briefly glow amber and then turn green to confirm that the USB connection has been made. You can then plug your headphones into the 3.5mm monitor output socket to monitor your audio and the playback from your computer. Now move over to the Motive desktop app to customize the signal processing and the mic gain. If you're new to recording, auto level mode will ensure that the output remains constant. However, your results will be better by using the manual mode. To avoid clipping and distortion, activate the limiter and you can personalize the sound using the compressor and EQ settings. Once you've customized the sound settings, you can close the Motive app. The settings will be saved to the MVX to you and used when you connect to any computer, even if it doesn't have the Motive app installed. That brings me to the sound quality. If you're using a microphone with a medium to high output, the noise floor on the MVX to you mic preamp will be low enough not to be noticed. But if you need to crank the gain up almost all the way up to the plus 60 dB maximum, you'll introduce a little hiss that you'll notice in your headphones. For instance, if you're using a Shure SM7B, you'll need to set the gain to between plus 55 or 60 dB to get speech peaking at around minus 12 to minus 6 dB. The lowest output dynamic microphone that I have is this Audio-Technica Pro 31 that I'm recording with right now. Even so, the output is a little bit higher than I would have with a Shure SM7B. On the Motive app, I've got the gain turned up to 55 dB. That's 5 dB short of the maximum. So I'm pushing the um, mic preamp in the MVX to you really quite hard. Um, I am peaking at between minus 12 and minus 6 dB in Adobe Audition. Uh, so I'm getting plenty of uh, gain, but I'm also hearing in my headphones a very, very slight amount of hiss. Not very much, but I can just about hear it, and I'll let you hear it for about five seconds. Now, to be fair, that noise is really, really low and most people probably won't even hear it. And it's going to be easy to get rid of using a denoise plugin. Alternatively, you could use a inline mic preamp like this Coda MB Stealth. It costs $50 and it fits between the microphone and the MVX to you. And it provides um, some extra clean boost to the signal so that uh, you don't have to push the internal mic preamp on the MVXU quite so hard. 
I've now plugged in a Coda MB Stealth mic preamp that gives a clean 28 dB boost. To use the uh, mic preamp, I've had to um, uh, switch on the uh, plus 48 volt phantom power that the MVX2U can supply. Um, and with that boost, um, I've had to turn the gain down in the Motive app from plus 55 dB to just 27 dB. And I'm still peaking at between uh, minus 12 and minus 6 dB in Adobe Audition. Um, so uh, the only difference is that because I'm using the mic preamp before the audio hits the MVX2U and because I'm not pushing the mic preamp in the MVX2U quite so hard, the hiss in my headphones has now gone. And I'll let you hear that for about five seconds. So if you're using a low output microphone, you're going to have to factor in at least an extra $50 on top of the $130 that the MVXU is going to cost you. If you're a Cloudlifter fan, that's an extra $150, making this adapter a little bit pricey. So the total price will be more than a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 4th gen audio interface. But if you're using a condenser mic, you'll be good with just the interface. So who is this for? If you're a podcaster, streamer, or musician who needs to record while on the road, this portable audio interface will be useful. The other benefit you get with the Shure MVX2U is the ability to control and customize your settings with the free Motive desktop app. The interface takes up very little space, even if you need to add a mic preamp. So if you're a traveling creator with limited luggage space, this might be for you, but if you're in a home studio, you probably might want to look at other options. But if you are an on-the-go creator, are there any credible alternatives? Well, if you want something this small, there's not much out there that will give you all the same features. But if you have a little extra luggage space, you could use a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. That will also cost you $30 less than this. Or if you've got a Zoom Handy recorder like the H4n or H5, you can use it in audio interface mode and hook it up to your computer or phone. What I would avoid using is a USB to XLR cable. They cost around $30, but aren't in the same league as the Shure interface. If you want to use XLR and lavalier microphones with a Zoom H5 recorder or use the H5 as an audio interface, I'll put links on the screen at the end of this video to videos I've done on those topics. If you found this video helpful, you can support this channel by using the links in the description. And please like, share and subscribe. To make sure you don't miss any of my new videos, smash that notification bell. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep creating.